Brody friends. Back in the beehive. <laughs> yes. Um, it is pouring outside and um, G and I are going camping. <laughs> Who cares? That means more time to stitch. <laughs> but yeah, it is pouring. And when I came back um, from uh, the class I took up in Portland, I actually at one point driving over the mountain had to uh, pull off the side of the highway uh, because it was raining so hard that um, the windshield wipers couldn't keep up with the amount of water and uh, I couldn't see and so I just kind of gently pulled off the side of the road and hoped if any car came by that they would see that I was there. Yeah, so we have had um, a lot of rain. Um, usually our fall is not rainy. Um, we had a really wet spring too, but usually fall is when we have this riot of riot of colors. It is, um, yeah. There's a little bit of color out there, but but the trees are going. Oh, rain! Gotta grow some more. So um, yeah, it's different. But yeah, we're gonna have a wet camping trip. Well, not so wet because um, you know Penny. We love Penny, and um, we're all cozy in there. Besides the fact that we're going to a hot springs, so doesn't matter if it rains. In fact, when you're sitting in the hot springs, uh, w when it's snowing, it's actually magical. Actually magical. Yeah, so that's going to be, it'll be okay. You know, what are you going to do? Mother Nature, she's crying over all the stuff we've been doing to her. So today is pincushion day. Why is it pincushion day? Because I'm going to Woolstock. I'm going to Woolstock. Yeah, I'm going to hang out with my girlfriend Stacy at her three-day party that is all about wool. And I love wool. So, I get this email. And you know, I know a lot of you leave comments that say, I don't know how you keep up with your life. Let me tell you. I have no idea either. It's always a miracle when I can pull it off. And um, I get this email from Stacy that says there's a pincushion exchange. What? I got to make a pincushion? When? How? So I said, hey, it's pincushion day on Quilt Roadies. <laughs> Taking you along with me. And I have been saved, saved, by Jackie. Now, for those of you that have been in Sisters or been to Quilter's Affair before or go in the Stitch and Post, Jackie has been this kind of a... You don't always see her in the foreground, but the wheel is turning. She's pushing the wheel. Yeah. And uh, so I went in the Stitch and Post uh, like a week and a half, two weeks ago, and uh, when you go in the back door, you run into all the the worker bees, and uh, Jackie's back there in her spot, and she has a creative, she's very creative, and she does, um, uh, she kind of thinks outside the box, so she makes up kits for the Stitch and Post, and um, she does, she's very crafty, just very crafty. And so I stopped and talked to her and saw what she was, she was making up pincushion kits. And um, I saw this one fabric and I, and the pincushion she made out of it. And I had to go out and buy a yard of this fabric. A yard, a yard. And you shall see why. So this fabric, it feels like a, um, let's 
see if I can get the animals up right. Let's see. Yeah, there they are. It feels uh, like a linen, uh, like a, or a, a linen canvas, you know. And it is, let's see if I can see who it's by. You can get it at the Stitch and Bulls, but you better hurry because <laughs> I bought a yard. Oh, and it's made in Japan. They make the most interesting fabrics. Oh, did I cut off the, um, let's see, oh, Sevenberry. Sevenberry, made by Japan. And it has, um, it is like a lightweight canvas. And um, the reason I had to buy it was because of the pincushion she made, which I will show you. Um, not her pincushion, but I'm going to be making one today. And then uh, she showed me the book that had this whole, this new book that um, had only pincushions in it. And, and it was by a local gal who I consider a friend, who's a friend of Stacy's. When I go to Woolstock, I actually have to maybe take one of Debbie's pin cushions. And this book is filled with, you could use them like as bowl fillers or pin cushions for friends. So here is that. Bowl me over. Oh yeah, that was absolute truth. I was bowled over because what, oh, well, this is, I, I can't decide, see this is a problem. I have to take a pin cushion for a pin cushion exchange, but I can't decide which pin cushion, so I'm making two different ones, and I'll see what moves me when I get there. But I love the Be Kind one. Isn't that adorable? And I decided to, I got, now in these instructions they say to put the pin cushion the front of it on wool, but I am actually doing it with fabric, the front and back, and then pull it, putting uh, wool motifs on the top of it. So I chose some fabric out of my stash, so this is just a really old piece of fabric, really old piece of fabric, so I can, I'm not going to even tell you, you won't be able to find it, but I bought yards of it like in the 90s. And that's what I'm going to make as the background for my Be Kind. And then, the one that I saw that Jackie made, that just, it bowled me over. Yeah. Oh, and that bowled me over is a Debbie Busby book. The Patchwork Place puts it out. So, Jackie made this pin cushion. See, yeah, that pin cushion. And, but she didn't put the writing. She put that tree. But what she did was she took that fabric from Japan that you can get at the stitching post and made it the background. And so the tree trunk is coming down here next to this beaver. <laughs> totally cracked me up. Total genius. Total genius. And so I went out and I bought a yard of that fabric, including this book. Yeah, yeah. Don't make eye contact with Jackie. <laughs> of course, when I went back there, she's like the queen of those little wallets that were designed by um, Valerie Wells that you can get on the $3 card from the Stitch and Post. But she fussy cutted the mo the fabric by Tula. Oh yeah. I'm telling you. Crazy. <gasps> and I bought these for special gifts for somebody. So, um, for Christmas. So, uh, I was really happy. So the way I do this, just to give you a heads up, is my, um, pin cushions, I back the fabric, whether it be wool or cotton, I back with SF 101, which is a lightweight fusible that I get on the bolt. It's a pellon. 
It's a Pellon product called SF101. And I use my 40% off coupon and buy a bolt of it because I am all about it. And I back the fabric. So I cut my pieces out in the size required by the pattern and I put the SF101 on the back and then I steam set it together. So it kind of gives the fabric a little bit of heft so when I put the uh, wool on the front of it, it will um, be easier to stitch and it'll hold up to all my work. And then I use Soft Fuse for my uh, wool motifs. So I'm going to be tracing those onto uh, the soft fuse and then uh, fusing the, the motifs that are drawn on the soft fuse onto my wool. And then I stuff the pin cushion with a combination of polyfill to give it a little bit of softness and to fill in the corners and one of these um, uh, ground nut shells. Now I know that you some people go to the pet store and they sell this stuff for like the bottom of bird cages and stuff uh, but I I don't know I like I like getting it um, from the quilt shop and um, I use unscented for personally, I like I collect lavender because I plant a lot of lavender around here, and so I like to get the buds and dry them, and then put them in with this. But I have found that so many people are allergic to flowers, and or don't like the lavender scent that when I'm making a pin cushion for someone else, I tend to not put the lavender in unless I know they like lavender. So I, since I don't know who is going to get this because it's a pincushion exchange, and I don't know which pincushion I'm going to ultimately throw in the pot, I um, am just going to use this unscented walnut shells. So I've already prepped my fronts, and so now I'm going to start searching for my wool and prep uh, the wool motifs to put on the front of these and then we're going to stitch. So stay tuned. So the reason I save scraps is for these projects like this. So I have over in that side in the bookcase I have little bins of little wool scraps that um, from other projects because I know sometimes I just need a little piece. And now I have my motifs and my wool scraps all laid out on this woolly mat with um, my SF, uh, no, my soft fuse, <laughs> my soft fuse motifs all cut out and kind of laid out. And um, I have my background pieces all ready to go. And just so you know, I save when I'm doing any kind of um, wool project or a cotton project where I am using SF-101 or soft fuse. If I have big enough chunks left over, I save them in this little plastic thing that pillowcases came in, uh, in my uh, closet. Because sometimes all you need is a little, a little piece. And you don't want to cut off a big old length off of the, the um, bolt. So now I have my steam on. I use steam for everything. And I'm going to just start steaming these things down. And I steam from both sides. So once I get this all done, on one side, I turn it over and steam it from the back side.
It's still raining. Next step is to cut out the motifs. And I use um, Kai scissors for my wool projects. Um, I got them at the Stitch and Post. Um, they are made in Japan and they are just um, really, really sharp. And the serration on them is so fine that you can't hardly see it. And um, it cuts through wool like butter. Better, better, better. Got one B wing. So I wonder what you guys are working on. Are you already starting on your Christmas projects? I have, um, yeah, I definitely have a backlog of uh, Christmas stuff to get going. I don't know if I'll get everything handmade done. I like handmade gifts. Um, they're, they're fun, but I'm beginning to think that in order to make a handmade Christmas gift, I need to be starting in January for next Christmas, don't you think? Yeah. These Kai scissors are the 5 inch. And I also love the tiny ones for really fine cutting. I'll be posting some things on um, Instagram and Facebook from Woolstock. And just so you all know, I get like I have like a a whole backlog of requests for um, seeing my Instagram or Facebook, and I am just really sorry, uh, but if I can't tell that you're a quilter by seeing your stuff, or I just don't say yes, only because I've had some weirdness, and you have to really be careful now. And there's some things where I see that people have requested to view your stuff, but they have zero posted on there. And I guess I'm kind of confused by that. You know, it's, um, I feel like um, sharing and friendship is a two-way street. So, um, yeah, so if you have requested and I haven't responded, it's not because I'm <laughs> A snob. It's because I'm nervous about not knowing who you are. That's it. In this day and age on the internet, you have to be so vigilant. I have been getting a rash of robocalls telling me there's a warrant out for me. <laughs> I think the quilt police are looking for me. This is going to be a cute one, this little Be Kind. That Debbie Busby from uh, her, her, such a sweet, sweet, you know, such a sweet book, Bowl Me Over. And <laughs> she grew up in the Pacific Northwest wooden spool design so I know you have seen her and she comes out with fun fun stuff but she's busy she's a 
she's a grandma to a, a, um, a, a whole softball team, practically. <laughs> and her husband is really nice, too, because I've met them at market. I look at how I've laid that out on my background and I just it has to be appealing to me <laughs> not necessarily appealing to you but it has to be appealing to me that it's all kind of centered I measure things and and just sometimes I want the wings a little bit different they have the wings more straight out I I like my wings more up yeah okay now here we go I'm gonna Use them down. My favorite iron, a Panasonic cordless. Using lots of steam. And I don't iron, I press. I like, see how the little beaver is right there underneath the tree? And I like that the bear's head is just peeking out from behind the tree. Isn't that adorable? So this fabric can be purchased at the stitching post. So I don't know how much they have on the bolt. But then here's my bee. And then I'll put the stitching bee kind. And... Um, and then I'll just do my regular wool stitching. Um, I probably will do just kind of a whip stitch or a blanket stitch and then, you know, sew it, stuff it, turn it inside out. But I think I'm going to be taking these to stitch at the campground because they're so cute. Yeah. So there it is. Today's pin cushion day. I hope that uh, that you're having um, better weather than we are and that you're stitching and that as the bee says, be kind. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies. Mm -hmm.